All right, folks, we're in that other three-story building. It's round on the top, flat on the bottom, designed to deflect an overhead blast away from us. It's designed to deflect an overhead blast away from us. Upstairs is the cruise quarters. Uh, you ever been in the military? You know it's not the Hilton up there, all right? It's basic. Two bunk beds, a kitchenette, and a bathroom. That's it. Downstairs, the equipment bay where all our power communications come through. This is launch control. This is where we spend most of our day. The last thing we need to worry about down here is a shock wave. A detonation is going to create this incredible earthquake. Make the land above our heads look like waves on the ocean. We need to survive that. Everything critical to launch this missile, the people, the equipment, the missile itself, all going to be on giant springs and shock absorbers. You'll see them everywhere down here, including all three floors of this building. Now, we're not attached to the wall. We're just hanging here by eight of these massive springs around the room. So in case of that shock wave, the ground around us and the shell of the building itself can all bounce up and down a foot and a half and a foot side to side, and we should just hang here safe in our little control. There's four people on the crew, two officers and two enlisted people. We're here for the next 24 hours. That's our ship. We call it an alert. It's our job while we're here. You can call any secret messages, monitor and maintain the complex and the missile, troubleshoot any problems that may arise, keep it in a state of readiness. Missile has to be ready to go every moment of every day. Now, if something breaks and we're not in a state of war, we can call the base. Over at Davis Montana Air Force Base in Tucson, there are 450 dedicated maintenance people stationed there, called the MIMS. They specialize in all aspects of these 18 titles. They'll come out, fix us, keep us at that state of readiness. The first person on the crew is the commander here. You in the Air Force now? You're going to be a captain today. Captain in the Air Force. You're responsible for all of us and all of this for the next 24 hours. You have the weight of the world on your shoulders, man. If that order comes through to launch, it's up to the captain here to make sure the crews actually go through with it and launch. Now, we went through extensive psychological testing. We met monthly with our psychiatric team, made sure the four of us coming down here were stable enough and willing enough. But there were doubts. The Air Force had doubts. Even the crew members had doubts whether they would actually go through with it. So two of us carried guns. If one of us tried to stop the other from launching, we'd shoot them, drag them out of the way, carry on with the launch. That's your job, Captain. <laughs> You're the deputy commander. You're going to be a first or second lieutenant in the Air Force. You're learning how to be a commander. You're in charge of all our communication. Four radios connected to seven antennas will point out later. Redundancy. You're also a safety officer. When the men are out there working, you keep track of where they are on that board in case they have an accident or we get the order to launch. Can't launch if they're out there, they won't survive. The most important job is taking care of our clock. Now, there's no wires going to this clock. It's not electric. Electric clocks are not reliable enough for our needs. It's an eight-day wind-up chronometer, finest of its kind. It's been running since 1963. Deputy on duty every Sunday morning winds that clock, and then twice a day, every day, that clock would be synchronized with the atomic clock in Boulder, Colorado. Your clock can never be more than one second off. That's your launch clock. Launch clock is set to Zulu time. Zulu time is seven hours ahead of our lunch clock or our local time. Anybody know what Zulu time is? Greenwich Mean Time, the zero meridian. Where the time zones start. We use it, our allies use it, and the space station uses it. It avoids confusion during military operations. We don't worry about AM, PM, daylight savings time. It's the same time for everybody in the world, no matter where in the world you are. And right now, it's quarter past five o'clock in the afternoon. Or in military time, 1,715 hours. No confusion. The last two crew members are the enlisted people, uh, the most technically trained people down here, the workers. I spent a year in missile school before they let me set foot in here, about three times longer than the two officers. I had to learn everything about that missile. First person is called the Missile Facilities Technician. Just what it sounds like. They take care of all the facilities. They're going to keep us alive. They're going to keep that missile alive. There's nine floors out there jam-packed with anything you think a liquid fuel rocket could need. Hydraulics, pneumatics, sewage, water, power, air conditioning, heating. They take care of all that stuff. Now, the big step forward in technology between Titan 1 and Titan 2 was the fuel. The previous missile system ran on a cryogenic fuel, liquid oxygen. It boils away at 300 degrees below zero. You can't keep it on the missile because you can't possibly keep it cold enough. The new fuel is hypergolic. 
As long as we keep it at 60 degrees, it can sit fueled indefinitely, ready to go at a moment's notice. Of course, it's going to keep it at 60 degrees. 